Hello and thanks for joining me today. I'm DMAC. Now, I do a lot of lock picking videos here on YouTube and over on Instagram. And I do get asked quite regularly what locks I would recommend. And I tend to reply with the same answer that it depends on the application. Um, there's no point using um, a huge, heavy, high security padlock like this multi lock um, on a crappy wooden shed with plate glass windows because, of course, uh, any would be thief you know, might uh, decide not to tackle this lock. Of course, they're going to break your windows. Also, if you've got an expensive lock uh, on a crappy shed, then someone might think that you might be trying to keep something valuable in there and they might actually target your shed over your neighbours. So um, it's just worth bearing in mind that it is for the application. Now, that said, recently um, I had to buy a bike lock that I'm actually going to use. Um, I'm quite into mountain biking. I've got some reasonably um, expensive bikes that I certainly don't want to get stolen. And I wanted to have a lock that I could lock up my bike with when I'm out and about. Now, I've got a reasonable knowledge of locks and security for sort of, you know, keeping bikes secure. So what lock did I choose? Was it a high security lock? Was it a big padlock like this? Was it some sort of heavy chain that would, you know, you couldn't cut through? Well, actually, it was this. I know it's a little underwhelming, isn't it? This is a Smith and Lock, which is a, a cheap, a cheap brand of locks, and this is a really cheap bike lock. This is probably one of the cheapest bike locks you could probably buy. So why on earth would I buy this exact bike lock to uh, secure my bike? Well, as I said, I'm into mountain biking. I need a lock to secure my bike when I'm out and about. Um, on the rare occasion that I'm not on the bike. So I certainly wouldn't use a lock like this to lock up a bike in a city centre, anywhere where there's lots of people, but I tend to go where there's not many people. Uh, the 99% of the time, my bike is between my legs. It, it stays beneath me. I'm on it um, for the duration, but very occasionally I might stop for a cup of coffee. Um, I might stop at the local shop and I would use a lightweight lock um, just to keep the bike locked up um, so that no one's going to run away with it. Now, a, a lock like this, you could probably pick it very easily, which we're going to demonstrate in just a minute because this is a lock picking channel. Uh, you could probably cut through it with a hacksaw and you could probably uh, go through it with bolt cutters or a pair of pliers or something like that. But the thing is, as I say, I'm not going to leave my bike unattended um, in a city centre with something like this. If I do leave it at a shop, um, I will leave it for less than a minute. I'm just going to nip in and, you know, grab a bar of chocolate or something like that. Or if I'm sitting in a cafe, then I'm always with our eyesight of my bike. Uh, ideally, the bike's right next to me, but even so, it will be locked up so that someone couldn't grab it. And the chances of someone having uh, a pair of pliers or uh, bolt croppers or anything like that in the areas that I go to in my bike are very, very low. So for years that I've been into mountain biking, I've used very lightweight locks. It's just my last one busted. Uh, so this is the replacement. And let's just have a look at how much this weighs. Because weight is the consideration. That's you know I, I, This is going to not be used most of the time, but very occasionally. Uh, we've got 185 grams. Very occasionally, this will be used um, for very short periods. So 185 grams for that. If we compare that to this multi-lock padlock, uh, 1.4 kilograms. So a world of difference. I certainly don't want to be lugging this around as I'm going up and down the hills. Anyway, this is a picking channel. So uh, let's see what it takes to get this picked. I've got my tensioner. I have got my pick. Let's see what it takes to get this lock open. So we've got four pins and we've got a tiny little keyway. Quite a challenge to keep a tensioner in there. Um, so I can't imagine at this price point it's got any sort of security pins in it. So I'm just cranking up the tension and feeling for any binding pins. And there we go. I think, yep, we got this lock open. Well, it's not the most secure lock in the world, but it fits the bill. And it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, that it is all about application. Because I need a light lock that I can throw in my bag and will come in useful uh, on the very few occasions that I need it for those very short periods of time. And not some um, high security, expensive, heavy 
uh, lock. Now, what do you think about my uh, security choices for my bike? I'd be really interested to hear your comments on it. Um, I'm going to leave a little DMAC logo up there. If you hit that, you can subscribe, which is always great. Uh, leave a like on the video, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.